We're in the midst of beautiful Irish countryside near Dublin, Ireland, on location with the motion picture Sinful Davy, directed by our guest, John Houston. Mr. Houston, was Davy a difficult role to cast in any sense? Uh, well, I was very fortunate. Um, uh, when we started casting, one of the first uh, people who was brought uh, in to see me was uh, John Hurt. Uh, I saw his picture in, uh, in a player's directory and asked that, that he be brought in to me, and uh, he was, and I said, that's our man. Yesterday, out here on location, Mr. Houston and I had an opportunity to talk with your daughter, your 16-year-old daughter, Angelica, and uh, she is, it's just been announced, going to star in a motion picture that you're going to direct. Now, will that be your next picture after Sinful Davy? I'm not sure, but it, it will perhaps, and she won't star in it. She'll appear in it. Oh, I see. I, I misunderstood. I <laughs> well, she'll play, she'll play a leading role, but she's not a star yet. She'll have to, she'll have to prove whether she's of that uh, caliber or not. Do you have uh, any secret desire that um, you just assume she'd be interested in something else besides acting? Um, no, no. I think uh, I'm all for doing uh, what she'd like like to do and uh, would be best at doing and um, I can very well imagine that uh, acting will prove in the long run to be her fort. Mr. Houston, I had never known until just uh, this trip that uh, you actually spent some of your childhood in Weatherford, Texas, which is very near our Dallas-Fort Worth area. Do you have any recollections at all of Weatherford, Texas? Um, no. No, my father was um, was um, for a very short time uh, an electrical engineer. Um, my grandfather had won uh, Nevada, Missouri, the waterworks and the power. From the, uh, Nevada, Missouri, and Weatherford, Texas, in a poker game. <laughs> and my father was uh, an out of work actor. I think his uh, road company had gone bust. And uh, so my grandfather brought him on, uh, my grandfather on my mother's side, his father-in-law brought him on to uh, become a, uh, an engineer. So he took a correspondence course and in engineering. And um, it ended rather disastrously in Nevada, Missouri. Um, there was a fire and the uh, fire department kept asking for more pressure and he gave them too much pressure, apparently. And uh, the valves broke, whatever that means. And um, about half of Nevada, Missouri burnt down as a result. And we left that same night. <laughs> um, and um, so my, uh, our next stop was Weatherford, Texas, where he resumed his, his work as an engineer. Um, word didn't travel so quickly in those days. I think Nevada was kept in the, in the background. The events that had occurred there weren't disclosed. And, um, and I do remember, it's my first memory in life, uh, a, little, a little, what must have been a generator. Uh, and uh, my father telling me that that was mine, that belonged to me, this was in the, in the uh, power works. John Houston, thank you very much for talking with us today. And we're speaking from the countryside of Ireland, near Dublin. Robert Morley, I have come all the way from Texas to Dublin, Ireland, to see you on location here with Sinful Davy. And I have planned to look so chic for you, my darling, and it's so cold that I've had to go around and borrow sweaters from everyone here, and be careful, you're next. My darling, but you're, you do look very chic in that lovely suede, Irish suede jacket. I don't think you could look possibly nicer, even if you tried. <laughs> Robert Morley, have you ever been to Texas? No, I can't truthfully say I ever have, no. Would Dallas, you like to come? If I was paid enough, yes. <laughs> I would, yes, I would, yes, I would. Well, why not? I mean, you can... Uh, yes, I would. I don't know what I think Texas is like quite. I don't think those hats would suit me. And there's a shop there, isn't there, in Dallas, where they sell 
golden things and isn't yes. that a beautiful shop? Stanley Marcus would love yes. to hear that it's called a shop. Well, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. It's a specialty store. It's a way of life. It's a, yes, it's a way of life as well, I know. But there's something about Texas which, of course, fascinates the Englishmen, particularly if they haven't been there. They see that lovely oil sprouting out everywhere, you know, and, and enormously rich people. And I don't know, are you happy in Texas? You tell me about Texas. I then. adore Texas. I'm a transplanted Texan. I come originally from the Midwest. Now, what's the climate like? Well, at this moment, if I were in Texas, it would probably be a hundred degrees, Unbearable. and I, m my teeth wouldn't be chattering like they are. Ah, oh, but darling, you'd be very hot and you know, and, and, and sweaty and nasty. Oh yes, I wouldn't like that. What's it like in the winter then? Well, in the winter, it depends on where you are. In the Dallas-Fort Worth area, there might be a little bit of snow once or twice a year. And you would get what we call blue northers. Do you know what a blue norther is? I don't think I want to talk about this anymore, darling. <laughs> Let's stick to this lovely, grey, soft climate <laughs> that they have here, where there's no risk of getting sunstroke or pneumonia <laughs> or a blue northern, whatever that is. No, I think, you know, we're, we're a group, Mr. Morley, and I think they're going to take us all to London tomorrow. We're going yes, to check into the hospital uh, on a group rate. <laughs> no, you're not, darling. It'll do you good to get out in the air, and you must give up this American obsession with the temperature. It's quite ludicrous the way on your news and your television you announce to an expectant, I'd imagine, very bored public, what the temperature is. You have a skin, which I want you all to know this, which adjusts automatically to a change in temperature. It's one of the inventions of nature, and it works very much better than a lot of other inventions of man. There's nothing to prevent you going out on a cold day or a hot day, when you get into a hot bath or a cold bath, the skin acts so that you don't, in point of fact, die uh, of pneumonia or even get a touch of bronchitis. And it's enormously silly to worry about what the weather's going to be tomorrow, too, because it's going to be different from today, and it would be very boring if it was always the same. Even in Texas, I imagine, it's different occasionally. May I break in to say thank you very much, Dr. Robert Morley? <laughs>